All right, we are back again with another video. Let's just get into it. Um, today we're gonna to talk about uh, what I look for when I am doing an electrical rough. The areas that I look for, or the violations I look for when I'm doing an electrical rough. Um, so let me just get this camera turned around. We'll get started. Um, we're in a brand new home, just built. It's a, it's a small one, it's probably about 1,200 square feet. It's a single, single family, one level. And I'm kind of giving you a, give you a look. Um, so let's just go through, um, try to make this quick. I wanna try to keep them short and sweet. Um, I seem to get more views when they're when they're short, so <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep them short. Uh, electrical rough. Um, so let's get into it. This is a bedroom here. Uh, pretty much go through and check all the, the at least one outlet on every wall, every wall, and it is secured to a stud and. The Romex is going straight up to the top plate. And if it's closer than an inch, inch and a half to that edge, edge of that top plate, then we need a, a nail guard or some, some type of metal plate. I um, also want them to seal the penetrations, but typically I'll check that on, on framing or, or insulation. But I, I go through each bedroom, make sure there is a smoke alarm box in every bedroom as well. I also look for if they're coming off that receptacle box that within a foot, within 12 inches, that it's secured. You wanna make sure that, that every box is, you know, every Romex, every wire is at least secured within 12 inches. You got your switches going through. Switches right here, that's a switch box right here. And within that 12 inch area, you wanna staple. Um, down here in Georgia, we're under the NEC 17, where we just transitioned to the NEC 20. But when this house was permitted, which was late last year, um, the electrical, we were under the NEC 17. So a lot of the codes that he is, is governed by is, is under, you know, last year's code. We just transitioned to a new electrical code this year. NEC 20, but the number of wire or NEC or Romex going through every hole, the max is, is four, four of these. I typically cap them at three. I don't, I don't want any more than three going through. So I, I go through and check every penetration, make sure no more than three are going through every, every penetration. And like I said, I go through, this is the family room area here. Go through and check every wall. Make sure there's at least one outlet. Okay, now we're in the uh, the kitchen area. It's a, it's a smaller house, I'll say again. Maybe about 11, 1200 feet. This is the kitchen area. It's really, really small. Um, and this, the, this is the kitchen sink here. You see the, the drainage line, hot and cold water, and there's another. The red is the hot water, blue is the cold. Got hot and cold water for the sink, and we got another hot water for the dishwasher. That outlet here, receptacle boxes for the dishwasher as well, or it could be for the garbage disposal. But this will this will be pretty much where the kitchen sink will sit. We want a outlet within two feet each side of the kitchen sink. So we got one here, outlet. And we got one on the other side as well. I check for that. Um, come over here to the laundry. Um, make sure we have an outlet for the washing machine and for the dryer. So I, I go through every room, basically. Check, make sure that, you know, we got outlets on every wall. Uh, we got a smoke alarm box in every bedroom, smoke alarm box uh, outside the bedroom, smoke alarm. Um, on every level, um, make sure they have receptacle boxes for the, for those 
those units. Um, also in the attic, um, this particular house, it does have an attic in it. I don't know if you can see it. That's the attic opening right here. And there is a unit up in that attic. I'll try to get you up there to see. There, there's a unit. Hold on for a second. Get you up there. And there is a unit. As you can see, there's a unit up in the attic right there. So also make sure that there is a service outlet up in the attic, wherever that unit is. And there's a light fixture, a box for a light fixture up in that attic as well. If, if there were no mechanical units, if they didn't have a furnace up in that, in that area, then that would not be needed. Maybe just a, a light fixture, but that's not even required. If there's no mechanical unit up in that area, in that attic area, then there's no light fixture, there's no service outlet required up in that area. But uh, this particular home has a, a air handler up in the attic, like a lot of homes in Georgia, like a lot of homes down here in Georgia, they do. Uh, we require them to have a light fixture, a box for a fixture, a light fixture, and a service outlet. Now also check the panel as well. This is the panel, it's a 200 amp panel. As you can see, um, make sure that the neutrals, neutrals, neutral line, there's a neutral line right here, that the neutrals and the grounds, the grounds over here, they're separate, they're on, they're on, they're on their separate, separate bar. So the neutral bar right here, the ground on this side, the electrician did a nice job of setting, separating everything. Um, make sure these lines are, are really tight and secure, or torqued down correctly. Um, that's the line that's coming in from down in the cross bases. This, this house does have a cross base. It goes that that service line runs down below the bottom plate through the cross base out to the meter base. Also check to make sure there's a Boca plate, that's the metal plate. I'm kicking it with my shoe. Um, he drilled a nice little hole, so they have to go back and seal all those those penetrations up. But I want to make sure there's a there's a plate there in case you know when those guys come through with that nail gun and that drywall that they don't they don't hit that that service line right there. Um, and and the uh, the Romex going up through the top plate. Uh, you see the holes that are drilled. They still have to come back, like I said. Let me flip this around. Still have to come back and seal all these penetrations up. You got your Boca plate. That's that big metal plate that keeps, uh, you know, keep the guys from, from hitting that wire when they install the drywall. And that still has to be sealed. Um, but those are the kind of things I check. Um, like I said, I'm trying to keep it short. Um, check the penetrations through the top bottom plate. Make sure the house... It does have uh, boxes for alarms, smoke alarms, carbon, mon carbon monoxide detectors. Um, check the location of the panel. Make sure all the penetrations are sealed and not real close to the edge. If they are, we need um, some kind of guard, some kind of protection. Um, and that's basically it. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, also on the exterior. Um, I go outside to make sure that there's a service outlet for, for the condenser. Make sure there's exterior outlets front and back. Um, there, there, there are Romex going out for light fixtures at the doors front and back. Um, and outlets front and back. Uh, any other light fixtures maybe on the corners of, of the house, they could have some. Like this is one right here. i can show you one real fast. He threw one up right there. That's for the corner for like a spotlight. Foot floodlight. That's basically it. Basically it. This is this is a small house here. Like I said, it's about, about 11, 1200 square feet. That's what I kinda look for when I'm doing an electrical rough. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Um got any questions, like I said, hit me up down below. I will get back with you as soon as humanly possible. And I hope you guys staying safe, man. Keep keep the mask on and and uh, we'll see you soon, man. We'll see you on the next one.